Hello and welcome to this short presentation about secrets management with Oracle Key Vault. The use cases we will cover today will be database account passwords and private SSH keys fetched from OKV. Hi, my name is Peter Wein. I'm the product manager for encryption key and secrets management in the Oracle Database Security Group. A quick overview of Oracle Key Vault. Oracle Key Vault has been purpose-built for transparent data encryption. By installing it as a cluster with up to 16 geographically distributed nodes, it provides high availability, scalability and fault tolerance. It's a soft appliance that can be deployed on dedicated hardware, as a VM guest or in your OCI tenancy from the Oracle Cloud Marketplace. Of course, it manages keys, but also secrets, and that is what we will be looking at today. So the first use case is that we will store database account passwords in OKV. Why are we doing this? So there are maintenance scripts that run every night, every week, to create an ARM and backup, to refresh uh, materialized views, and those maintenance scripts need a database account to log into the database. Now, putting this password of that database user into the maintenance script itself is a very bad security practice because we have a clear text password in a script. So what Oracle uh, came up with many years ago is the Secure External Password Store, which is a wallet that contains the password of that user that the maintenance script needs to log into the database. It provides better security by removing the need for a clear text password in your maintenance script, but from a management perspective, it's still very inconvenient because if you rotate your passwords, you need to update the password in your database and in the secure external password store. And then the question remains, how do you facilitate controlled and temporary sharing of those passwords? So in the end, it turns out that you have to manage potentially thousands of secure external password stores. You need to deploy them. They need to be updated and protected. And you need to reconfigure each database to look up the password from the wallet when this script logs into the database. So what are the benefits if we centralize those passwords in OKV? It certainly provides better security because we don't have a password footprint on the server. We can automatically rotate passwords. The access to the passwords in OKV is strictly controlled. You can easily and securely share those passwords between different database hosts. And the passwords can be very strong because humans don't have to remember. And of course, the management is greatly simplified because there is no proliferation of secure external password stores. You set this up and you forget it, basically. So the first demo will talk about this use case where we store the database account passwords in OKV. So at first, we will assign a very strong password to the existing database user that is used by the maintenance script to log into the database. Then we upload this password into OKV and we add attributes, the name and custom attributes, the connect string to this password because we need to know which user needs to connect to which database with this password. So that is why we need to associate those attributes with the password. And then we write a script that sends the name and connect string to OKV. OKV returns a unique ID that belongs to that password, we send the unique ID back to OKV and we get our password back. Now we store that password in an environment variable and then we log into the database using the name connect string and the password that we just got from OKV. And I would like to show a quick demo. So here I'm on, on my database machine and the first thing that I will do is I will create a random file on a RAM disk. This will be the file that holds the password. And I'm creating a strong password. I'm using OpenSSL. You can use whatever tool you like. I choose to use OpenSSL and that creates my database account password. So now I create a SQL statement 
that changes that password of the existing user refresh data warehouse that basically represents what that script is about to do, right? It refreshes the data warehouse from a transactional database. Now we give that password to our database user and I don't even make an effort to, um, to remember this password. And now we are uploading this password into OKV and OKB responds with a unique ID. And I put this unique ID in an environment variable because I need it a couple times afterwards. And now we delete the temporary file that contained that new password. And we add the attributes to this password. So this is our name that we need to associate to the password and the activation date. The activation date is now, but in UTC, because all times in OKV are in UTC. And now I'm associating these two attributes, the name and the activation date, with that unique ID that I stored in an environment variable. That's my password. And also we need the connect string. The connect string is a custom attribute. So here's my connect string and I will apply this custom attribute to my password. And now we have a shell script that logs me into my database. So the first thing that I do is I read the username and the connect string and put those two strings into uh, variables that are needed inside the script. So the first variable that I have is my username and the second one that I have is my uh, connect string. So I execute object locate and I'm generating a JSON file. I put this JSON file through a JQ filter that applies all the correct values. And then afterwards I write this file, oh, this information into a JSON file. This, we do this only once because that can be reduced, right? Whenever I log in, um, we already know the name and the connect string. That is why we create this file only once and then we keep it. If it doesn't exist, it is created. If we find that file already, then we skip the step that saves us one round trip to OKV. So here I'm, I'm executing the object locate command again, but this time I'm reading from this um, JSON file that I wrote to disk and I'm extracting the unique ID that belongs to that password. Now that I have the unique ID, I can execute secret get and secret get basically finds the secret that is associated with this unique ID. And I'm putting this into another variable here. And then I log into the database. This is very simple. So this is my login statement into the database. Here I use, I log into the database without username and password. Then I connect username slash password. And then this script simply sleeps for three seconds and then we exit from the database. This little statement here uh, represents whatever script you have that's your maintenance script that runs every night, every week in your database. So now I use that script. The first parameter is my database user. The second one is my connect string. And I'm fetching this password from OKV and I'm connected as refresh data warehouse and after three seconds we're exiting. Now we have the second use case where we fetch private SSH keys from OKV. So what is the risk about private SSH keys when they are flying around on your hard drive? They can be stolen, they can get lost, and you do not have key governance. And uh, if we put the private SSH keys into OKV, theft and loss is virtually impossible because 
first the keys are stored in a hardened appliance and everything that you put into OKV, your passwords, your TDE keys, those private keys here are replicated across all cluster nodes. And it gives you key governance because now you can stop the uncontrolled key proliferation. You can avoid malicious use. You can centrally grant and revoke remote access and you can disable all remote access enterprise wide in case of an ongoing security incident. So in this next demo that I'm showing you, we already have public key authentication established so I can log into my remote host without providing a password. I will upload my private key into OKV and that's it. Then I have a shell script where I send username and host name because that's what I am connecting to. Um, to OKV, I get back my unique ID, I send the unique ID back and I get my private key. Now SSH requires that the private key exists on a file, so we need to temporarily store the private key in a randomly generated file on the RAM disk. Then we log into my remote instance and I delete my private key from my hard drive. So the lifetime of that private key on my, on my server is only a couple of seconds as opposed to basically ever. Okay, so here we are still on the database account passwords. This is just to verify that my um, uh, public key authentication is working. So I get into the remote server without a password. I'm registering my private key with OKV. So this is the name of that private key. This is the source where this private key can be uploaded from. This is the algorithm and the length. This is here, algorithm and length. I'm executing private key register. I put this through a JQ filter and then afterwards I write it into this JSON file and I'm displaying this JSON file. Now, I am executing private key register again, but this time I'm reading from the JSON file and I'm extracting the unique ID that we get back from OKV. I need to activate the key so that it can be used and then I can delete my private key from my hard drive. And of course, if I try to log into the remote machine, this no longer works because my private key is not present. Again, we have a script that helps us to log into my remote machine. Again, I take a parameter that I give on the command line and this is my first variable, that's the username and hostname. If this file here does not exist, then I execute object locate, I generate a JSON file, put it, to the, put it through a JQ filter and then write this file to a JSON file. Then I'm executing object locate again, uploading this JSON file and extracting the unique ID that belongs to my private key. Because the private key needs to be available on a file, I create a random file on a RAM disk. And once I get the private key out of OKV by specifying this unique ID, I write the private key into my temporary file. Here is a trick. I execute this command that deletes the private key from my hard drive with a delay of one second. While this timer runs, I can log into my remote server. And after I logged in, the file will be deleted from this random disk. So now we can SSH with OKV. This is the file name of the script. And I log into my remote machine. Perfect. I would like to direct your attention to the Oracle Keyboard documentation and specifically to the RESTful services that I have been using throughout this demo. There is a Keyboard Live Lab that allows you to familiarize yourself with the many features and use cases that OKV offers. As I mentioned earlier, you could also deploy Oracle Keyboard in your OCI tenancy from the Cloud Marketplace, and here is the link. 
And last but not least, here is the keyword homepage on oracle.com. So, thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed this little demo as much as I did and look forward to the next time. Bye bye.